season. Time now to focus on the SMU Mustangs. They're different, but they're the same. Head coach Bryce Lashley coming in to fill the shoes of Sonny Dykes, who has moved over to TCU. Lashley was the offensive coordinator under Sonny, helped build this team to a top 25 program. So we expect things offensively to look the same and a guy that is familiar with how to build a program out there in Dallas. It's an absolute great hire. It's a home run hire yeah. if you're SMU. And, you know, and Rhett Lasky has been all over the country as, as an offensive coordinator. So he brings in so much experience. Um, obviously, we'll see a wrinkle in, in the defense as well. I think they're going to change that up, play with five defensive backs to help them in the coverage. But if you're Rhett Lashley, he's got to be ecstatic of the yeah. team he's inheriting that he's taking over. So uh, I would look for big things from SMU this season. Tanner Mordecai, quarterback, yep. Rasheed Rice, at wide receiver. Let's welcome in the head coach, Rhett Lashley, joining us. Coach, appreciate you hopping on with us. I'm, I'm just so interested and excited to watch you this season. You know what it takes having been there and watched uh, Sonny Dykes build this team into a top 25 program. So what did you learn about how to take talent from all over Texas and bring it to Dallas. Yeah, hey Chris and Rennie, good to be with y'all. Um, you know, I did, I had two great years here with Sonny in, in 2018 and 19. And um, just being here in Dallas, being at SMU, being in the state of Texas where football is uh, probably more important in this state than it is anywhere around our country uh, was good. It was good to be here as we were kind of building our program and becoming uh, more integrated with Dallas and being Dallas's team and all the things we um, you know, we feel like we have to our advantage around here. At the end of the day, we're in a great location. I mean, we're at SMU's right in the heart of Dallas. Uh, we can recruit in the best recruiting base for high school athletes every year is right here in the Dallas Metroplex. And then, you know, when it comes to the new world of transfers, a lot of uh, really good players leave the Dallas Metroplex. And then when they decide to transfer, they want to transfer closer. And so um, that's been a big part over the last three or four years to what we've been able to do here both in high school and the transfer world, and it's all because of our location here in Dallas, here at SMU. Absolutely. Let's get to Chuck now, who has the questions from our media members for you, Coach. Hey, thanks, Chris, and welcome, Coach. We'll uh, we'll start with Joseph Hoyt from uh, the Dallas Morning News, please, with the first question. Hey, Red. I was looking at the roster, and there's over 50 new players, which kind of surprised me. Um, long story short, with a new coaching staff, you just had summer workouts. What did you learn in summer? What did you, what do you hope to learn in fall? And I guess any of these new guys that have really stuck out to you? Hey, Joe, what's up, man? Long time no see. Uh, heard you fired a 78 the other day. Is that accurate? 79, but, you know, it's cool. 79. I'm trying to help you. Well, hey. Um, Appreciate it. No, it's a great question. I mean, I think because of the success we've had over the last couple of years, um, you know, it's, I guess everybody just assumes we have this, you know, roster returning, but the reality of it is we got three returning starters on offense and five on defense. So we lost a lot of really good players. We have some really good veteran pieces returning, but um, we did. We had to go out and, 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 and really the way that the things have fallen this year in the transfer portal for every college team, things have changed probably more than normal. So we did. We brought in 26 new players, came on our campus June 1st, 12 high school signees and 14 transfers. And so they've had a great summer, uh, finished up their workouts yesterday. You know, we don't get to do a lot in the summer with them, but this year, you know, coaches were given two hours a week, which is more than ever. So we were able to spend some time with them. But uh, what I've learned is I think we've, uh, we've got a really good group. We've got a good mix of, of new players. We've got a good mix of transfers. We've got a good mix of returning veteran players in key positions. And I think the biggest thing is they seem to like each other and they work well together. And our biggest challenge for the next month is going to be making sure we become a team in a really close group so we can uh, compete on Saturdays. We'll go to the next question from uh, Jordan Hoffitt, please, from PonyStampede.com. Hey, Coach. Um, I know a bit of a big question mark coming into this year is the offensive line. Um, just kind of what have you seen going from spring to summer workouts? You know, obviously some of those new guys through transfer and freshmen are O-linemen. Just what have you seen from, from that group and, and kind of how do you assess that, that position group right now going into fall camp? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, we did lose four or five starters on the O-line. Uh, Jalen Thomas came back and returned. We're going to play him inside more, so he'll be in a different position. But I think it'll be good for him both this year and, you know, as he tries to get to the next level after the season. But uh, we were we were able to bring in a few transfer pieces. We got Owen Condon from Georgia, Joe Bissinger from, from Van, uh, Virginia, who played a lot of ball 
and uh, I think those guys give us some veteran pieces. But we do have some really good young talent here. I remember my last year here as OC, we brought in, I think, eight offensive linemen that year. And a lot of those guys are starting to grow up, you know, whether it's Marcus Bryant and Dalton Purdue and Branson Hickman and Cam Irving, and we have Justin Osborne returning. So we have uh, maybe not as much experience as, as went out the door with four guys leaving, but we do have some guys that we think are athletic. Uh, after spring and summer, they're getting bigger and stronger. Uh, it is a question mark for us, but I feel good about the guys we have competing up front. We go to the next question uh, from Dan Tortora, please. Wake up call DT.com. Coach, uh, looking at the fact that you've had experience, obviously, at SMU, but within other conferences, when we see this realignment and different things that are going on, how would you define where college football stands today? And why was it the right time for you to return to SMU? Yeah, with regards to realignment, I don't know if anybody really knows. I mean, I think college football is changing by the day. Um, and so we all just get up and control what we can control and do the best we can. But, you know, who knows what the next 30 days will look like, the next 12 months, next 24 months, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm sure if you're a fan, it's an exciting time. Um, if you're where we are, you're just getting ready for a season. And a lot of those things are out there, and, and that's all going to get settled really outside of our control. Um, so. As, as far as that goes, uh, that's really all I got to say to that. I, I, what was your second part of your question? Why it was the right time for you uh, yeah. coming from Coral Gables to return to SMU? Yeah, I think it was just the perfect fit. I mean, look, any, anybody who does what we do long enough, I'd, I'd been a coordinator, I think, 11 or 12 years. I mean, you want to be a head coach. That's a goal. That's a dream. Uh, so I was no different. But it, you want to do it where it's the right fit. And, you know, I'm from Arkansas, five hours away been at Dallas for two years. I knew SMU. I knew the campus and I knew the city. I know what I think uh, is, is being built here. I was here when we started it. I know the potential of what we can be as a program. So it just was the right fit and the right timing. And I'm just humbled that, uh, you know, I got the opportunity to come back here and, and be the head coach. We'll go next to Leo Haggerty from Amped Up Sports, please. Hey, Coach, before I ask my question, I just want to let you know, I shot 78 yesterday, but then I got to number 10, so it was a long afternoon here in Florida. <laughs> when, when you got the job, what was the first thing you said when you met with your team for the first time? Yeah, that's a great question, because um, <clears throat> the way everything worked, you know, I was in, uh, in Durham playing Duke on Saturday afternoon on a Saturday, uh, I was flown to Dallas Sunday night, and by Monday morning, I was talking to the team. And so it all happened pretty quick. And, you know, they had just had the season finished. They're going through change. And it probably wasn't maybe what I would have expected your first team meeting would be like. But it, the reality of it was um, we had a lot of good players, a lot of good people in that room, and change was happening for them too. And, and I just told them the truth. I just said, look, I, uh, it's your team. My job's to lead your team, but it's your team. I want to have great relationships with everyone here because um, that's what I believe in. Uh, it takes time to do that. And I really just ask them, hey, you know, in this world where guys have the ability to leave and transfer, I think they know that SMU is a great place. Dallas is great. Uh, with all that uncertainty, I just, I just ask them to give me a shot and trust me and give me time to hire a staff and uh, get to know them all and, and just to, uh, to just give me an opportunity to earn their trust. I wasn't asking for their trust at that point. Uh, I didn't have it or deserve it. But uh, that's all I really asked them to do. And in credit to them, I think they gave me that opportunity. We'll go next to Stephen Leonard, please, from 24-7 Sports. Hi, Coach. Obviously, uh, you won a state title at, in Arkansas under Gus Malzahn. Uh, what's the relationship between you two, and how is it like going to be a head coach against him? Obviously, we're close. I mean, he's my high school coach, and um, he came to my school when I was a seventh grader. We started running no huddle in junior high, and, and we did. We played in the state championship game three times and have been – Fortunate to coach in two national championship games together. So I, I owe a lot to him. He gave me an opportunity uh, several different times to get into college football as a GA. He hired me uh, to my first D1 OC job. So, uh, you know, I'm really appreciative to him. Don't like uh, competing against friends or people that I'm close with, but I'm going to have to do it several times this year. Obviously, we've got to go to UCF for our first conference game at a place where they hardly ever lose, and they're going to be really good. So, um you know, fortunately, it's not about me or Gus. It's about the players on the field. But, uh, yeah, we do have a good relationship. Okay, we'll stay in Orlando for Trace Trilco, please, sons of UCF. 
Uh, Coach, your team faces uh, two of the three schools uh, leaving for the Big 12. How satisfying would it be to send them out of the American with a loss? We actually face all three of them. You know, as a matter of fact, we're the only school uh, in the preseason top five to play everybody, all of the four schools. I mean, we got a real schedule, not just our non-conference slate with North Texas, Maryland, and TCU and Lamar, but uh, we do. We play, to your point, Houston, who's picked to win the league. Um, that's a big game anyways. Houston and SMU has been a, a pretty good rivalry over the years. Uh, Cincinnati's kind of the standard in our league right now, and then UCF is, is always really good, and, you, you know, Memphis as well. So. Um, we drew the best of the league, and that's the way we want it. And, um, you know, it has nothing to do with them being in our league, leaving our league. Uh, they're really good football teams, and this is a really good league. And uh, we know it's going to take our best every week, and we're excited to play a really challenging schedule. Okay, we'll make it three in a row from Orlando. We'll go to Kyle Nash from Black and Gold Banneret, please. Hey there, Coach. Um, listen, you have you, we've talked about you uh, having a lot of uh, turnover and having new guys in the system, but you have a very key returner in Tanner Mordecai in there. Um, him coming back for this offense for a second year, how huge is his leadership in to get everybody up to speed? And do you think he has the ability to be the best quarterback in the conference this year? Yeah, I mean, I think um, we do have guys returning at key spots. You're about to hear from them some in a minute. And Tanner's a, a big part of that. I mean, the season he had last year was incredible. Um, obviously, he's got a ton of experience. I think he's had a great spring, a great summer. You know, our guys wrapped up summer workouts yesterday, and um, I think he's, he's done everything we've asked him to do uh, in terms of leadership. And so, um, look, anytime you have good, um, you know, solid quarterback play, it gives you a chance, and we feel really good about that here, and uh, we're excited to see what Tanner can do this year. I look, we know he's good. Um, I think he would much rather just have a great season and win the conference and let everybody else decide who they think the best quarterback in the league is at that point. But uh, we're really happy he's on our team. Okay, we'll take the final one from Coach from uh, Jordan Hopditz with uh, Pony Stampede, please. Well, leading into that, with that being said, is Tanner your your week one starter or or does that battle with Preston Stone uh, continue through fall camp and and that announcement will come later? Yeah, I don't know when we'll announce all of our starters. You know, we're going to go through a competitive camp because we think that makes everybody better. That's one of kind of the, the core philosophies of our program is competitive excellence. And we just want to compete everywhere. And, and being a new staff, we've established that from every position, from quarterback on down to punter. And, uh, you know, we have a really good situation with Tanner, who I just talked about being an incredible, experienced, talented quarterback, and, and then having a really good young quarterback in Preston Stone. And so... Their position, it honestly, is the one you talk about because it's quarterback, but it's like all of them. Uh, we feel like competition makes our roster better. We've got good competition up and down our roster now with the, the returners we had in the spring and in the ones we've added in the summer. So um, don't really have a timetable for it. Um, don't really have a timetable for any of that. Uh, I know that's the question that everybody wants to know. We've got from August 2nd to August 21st till school starts, and we just want to have a really good competitive camp with our team, and that's what we're going to do. Brett Lashley, appreciate the time. Hey, real quick, are you going to let us know what you shot last time you hit the links? Who? Last time or the best of the summer? <laughs> last time was an 84. Best of the summer was <laughs> a 76. I'm there weren't a lot so. of times. I didn't get to play but about eight, but I did, I did nice. beat Joseph with a 76 one time. But that's, a, that's what matters. Appreciate the time. No, there's not a ton of it uh, left to play golf before you guys get things started out there. Appreciate it, Coach. Thanks, Chris. Excited to see um, what he brings in. And they talked about the amount of fresh faces. Yeah. I know that we're going to focus a lot of the guys they bring back in terms of Mordecai and Rice and a lot on the defense as well. But that's a lot of new guys and with new coordinators and a new head coach. He mentioned two, and these are two big pieces. Joe Bissinger from Virginia and Owen Condon from Georgia, two transfers that play offensive line. Again, I talked about it last segment. You can have all the great skill players you want. Tanner Mordecai, the great gear he had. Um, you better protect, yeah. and you need to run the ball, too. So offensive line, they use the transfer portal. Those are two p key pieces that I think are going to help them. And he'll, you know, Coach Lashley will put his wrinkles in there offensively as well. And then, again, uh, Coach Simon's new defensive coordinator, one of their bugaboos last year was in the secondary. Okay, teams were throwing on them. So he kind of runs a 4-2-5 scheme, five defensive backs, almost like a nickel in there the entire time. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to help them out. So you're going to see – I think you're going to see big changes for SMU on defense.
We talk about the transfer portal so much, and almost no one has done it better than SMU over the last couple of years. You talk about these guys that, I mean, Mordecai is from Waco, which yes. is less than two hours away from the Dallas Metroplex. You bring in guys that didn't stay immediately. They go somewhere else and then somehow find their way back home. And he mentioned that. I mean, being in, in, in the Metroplex in Dallas, that's what happens. You have all these great players. They go to these other big-time programs, and it doesn't fit in. And then it's natural when you want to transfer. Well, let's transfer back home, and SMU is sitting in a great position. As someone who grew up in this area, when they changed that logo to say the Dallas script, it really did make a big deal. You go to, to Love Field Airport, yep. and there it is, the banner hanging up as a team that has maybe been forgotten and has been able to get back on the map. What does Lashley have to do to keep them there? And a conference, like he said, they got to go play UCF and Houston and Cincinnati. Still, though, number four in the preseason poll. And they play TCU at home. That's true, yeah. Their old coach had just left. So yeah. a lot on their plate, especially Coach Lashley, his first year. So, yeah, he just needs to keep uh, his foot on the gas pedal. Talked about the addition of new players. And just really, this is a schedule where – you just kind of keep your head down, and, you know, you see they open up with North Texas, who will be a conference opponent next year. So you just got to kind of keep your head down and get through this schedule. I mean, it's a pretty tough schedule. Yeah, Maryland, September yeah. 17th. How about the Iron Skillet game? Where he'll go up against Sunny Dyke, September 24th. Has to then go to UCF to play his good friend and Gus Malzahn on October 1st. Then you have Navy, Cincinnati, and then Houston. They do get at home uh, that first week of November, but it'll be a tough course. It's interesting. We're going to talk to Tanner Mordecai in a second. He hasn't named a starter, but we are going to talk to him. Well, and because look how much uh, fanfare Preston Stone had, yeah. right, coming out of high school. So, yeah, another good one there on the roster. Quarterback Tanner Mordecai, wide receiver Rasheed Rice joining us now. Guys, thanks so much for hopping on. I, I'm curious, uh, Coach Takes Over, what uh, what is new? What has been refreshing about uh, a new staff there? Tanner, we'll start with you. Um, I think uh, Coach Lashley brings in kind of a new mentality, uh, very detailed oriented, uh, highly competitive atmosphere, and uh, that's something he's kind of brought to the table. Okay, welcome to questions from the media, please. We'll start with uh, Joseph Hoyt from the Dallas Morning News, please. Hey, this is for both of you guys. Um, the roster has over 50 new players. Um, obviously, you just finished summer workouts. Um, you know, Tanner, I know you got to break the rock yesterday. Rashi, you've been really talked about for how much work ethic you've put in in the weight room. I guess with so many new faces, how important was this summer to really gel? And I guess coming this fall to really to really gel with all these new guys. Um, <clears throat> honestly, it's been it's been a really great thing. I feel like. Um, starting our foundation, uh, the us talking about breaking the rock is just us basically <clears throat> being able to start fresh and not think about the past years or what just happened or anything like that. We're going to uh, rebuild this team and start our way to the championship. Okay, we'll go next to Jordan Hoffaditz, please, with Pony Stampede. Just for both you guys, what what was the summer like? Obviously, working with a new strength and conditioning coach. Also, like uh, Coach Lashley mentioned, having some time with the coaches that hasn't really been there before to really get to know this new staff and and kind of their style, expectations, and and build that uh, relationship not just with your teammates but also with your your new coaches. Um, I think uh, this summer is really important because uh, summertime's a time when a lot of guys um, are just going through things with each other, going through really hard workouts. Uh, students aren't here. So it's really just us, and it's uh, all we have. And whenever we're struggling together, it kind of builds uh, relationships and kind of mends us together when we go through hard things. And then the new rule that they pass allowing us to practice with our coaches has also helped a lot because we have so many new guys, and it helps us um, kind of gel with each other, gel with the coaches, and gel uh, with the offense. Yeah, I totally agree with Tanner. Uh, I just feel like <clears throat> us being able to, you know, work with our new coaches and stuff has helped us a lot just in, in the fact that anywhere you go as if you're a transfer or a new player, you're, you have to 
figure out a way to bond with your new teammates and your new coaches, even if they're not new. Anyways, you have to build a relationship with the people around you that you're going to spend time with. We'll go next to Dan Tortora. Wake up call DT, please. This is for both of you. Just what you can say, you talk about the coaching staff, how Casey Woods has come in as offensive coordinator, what you both think about his style and what he's asked of you. And then Tanner, just what you can say about how you and Preston have kind of fed off each other. Um, yeah, for the first question, uh, Coach Woods, uh, he comes in with uh, high energy, um, very detailed, and you can tell he cares about what he's doing and uh, the work he puts in. So, yeah, we're lucky to have Coach Woods here. Um, as far as me and Preston, yeah, we, we compete every day. Um, I mean, it's a good relationship. It's Everything's good about it. Um, I think having a competitive atmosphere is only going to make me better, uh, make me a better quarterback, and in return make him a better quarterback. So, uh, yeah, nothing but positivity. All right, and <clears throat> that's also the basically the same thing that's going on for me. I mean, obviously... The quarterback room is a, you know, like a major key of the offense and to have like two great quarterbacks is a great thing for a receiver room and it's not mentioned that much, but <clears throat> I think everywhere on this team, everyone's competing. Like Coach Lashley mentions, there's not a starter until we really get to the games and have starters, but I just feel like every position is competing as hard as they can right now because there's someone behind them trying to come in and take their spot or you know, just get on the field in any way they can. Okay, we'll go next to Ryan McNeil, please. Athletes Unfiltered. Sorry, I had to unmute there. Sorry, guys. Uh, random question for you, not on the football field, but a lot of college football fans love to go and see new stadiums and, and teams and do college football road trips. So if a college football fan is going to come and see you guys, what's a restaurant that you guys love and what should they order at that restaurant? I love, I love the big smile already. So where should they go eat? And what should they order when they go to that restaurant? I mean, I like to eat a lot. <laughs> That's Me why too. I smiling. I love to eat. <laughs> um, I mean, I recently found out that there's a turkey leg hut in Dallas. So that's kind of new to me. I, I, I definitely still want to try that. Um, but one of my favorite places to go is Del Frisco's, just because I love steak. I love to eat steak anytime. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a big steakhouse fan as well. Um, I also love sushi. Um, really good sushi spots called Hungry Belly. And yeah, go there. Thanks, guys. Okay, we'll go down to Trace Trilco, Sons of UCF, for the next one, please. Uh, Rashi, what do you like about Tanner's game? Man, <clears throat> I love that question. <laughs> There's a lot I like about Tanner's game. Um, to be honest, I like, I love the fact that he doesn't, he doesn't hesitate to look at, you know, if he, Tanner's the type of guy that is gonna read the field before he has a, a pre like determined route sometimes if, if just know that if we have a play and there's and he's able to tag a route, it's more than likely gonna be a touchdown tag route. <laughs> so he's really confident and I'm confident in his game as well. Rajit Tanner, appreciate the time. Uh, go find yourself some steak and sushi here in Dallas. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy fall camp. As the watch lists become available, the Maxwell Award watch list, one of five American Athletic Conference players that are on that list, goes to the best all-around player. Uh, some good talent on that list, and Tanner Mordecai, uh, one of three quarterbacks from this conference. Yeah, and I would expect Tanner Mordecai to pick up exactly where he left off last year, have an excellent season. And what a one-two punch with he and Rasheed Rice right there. Great receiver. Um, if they can just protect him, which I think they will, in, in, in Rhett Lashley, Casey Woods, they're going to have be an up-tempo offense. And the fact with the experience uh, that Tanner Mordecai brings back, he talks about tagging the routes and changing calls and, and seeing the coverage he's going against. That's a great experienced quarterback to run this offense.
So September 3rd at the start of the season. But the big one that you want to asterisk is September 24th. This has always been a big game no matter who was yeah. the head coach. It was the Iron Skillet Bowl. And now they're going to face their former coach in Sonny Dykes, who was also the guy that brought originally Coach Lashley to SMU a few years ago so, at the OC. Yeah, so the biggest thing, I think, for, for Coach Lashley is to make sure – his players and a lot of new players don't look ahead, right? Do not look ahead for TC. You've got to start the season strong. But, yeah, a, a tough schedule as you look at it from top to bottom for SMU. We're going to talk to Elijah Chapman, defensive lineman, in just a bit. You mentioned the 4-2-5 that gets brought in. How different is that from what they ran before? Because it'll be a quick fall camp, spring camp to try and learn this new system. Yeah, and I'm curious to see what Elijah Chapman said about that defense and, and how he feels, and, and in his words, how it's tweaked. But I think it just gives you more help on the back end, but I'd love to see what Elijah says. Well, let's get to a defensive lineman, Elijah Chapman. Elijah, thanks so much for hopping on with us. Uh, we were mentioning the, the change in scheme here with this new uh, system that's been brought in. How different is the 425 than what you guys ran a year ago? Um, honestly, I say it's it's a lot different. Um, it's a lot more aggressive. We um, sending more people uh, as far as like linebackers and um, pressures go, like blitzes, pressures, all of that. So um, we did something similar in 2019 and 2020. So it's not that much of a difference, but it's different compared to what we did last year. A lot different. Okay, we'll go right to questions, please. We'll take the first one from uh, Jordan Hoffitz with Pony Stampede, please. Uh, Elijah, going off, kind of talking about the the scheme, just talk a little bit about working with uh, Coach Simons and then obviously uh, Coach Tibbs on the on the defensive line. Um, working with Coach Simons, uh, he gives me a lot of, uh, he gives the whole defense a lot of excitement. Um, he loves to uh, be aggressive. That's one thing I love about it. Um, and Coach Tibbs, as far as Coach Tibbs go, um, he's pretty similar to uh, – the way he coaches is pretty similar to what I learned in high school. So I adapt to it pretty well, and the other players adapt to it pretty well as well. So um, I think everything is going good on that, on that end. Okay, we'll take the next one from uh, Dan Tortora, please. Wake up call DT. Elijah, as you step into this season, obviously from the inside out, you guys know yourself better than anybody. You go through change, but what is something about your team that you feel like people need to know that maybe they don't know at this point about SMU? Um, I would like people to know that we're hungry. We um, for years, for the, for the past years that I've been here, we've been chasing the championship, and. As those years went on, we built that culture in order to reach that championship. So I, I feel like this year we're a lot more hungrier than we were in the past few years. Okay, we take one more from Jordan, if you have one. Again, just kind of going off what you just talked about, how big is some of the are some of those non-conference games early in the season? You know, you got UNT that's jo going to be joining the conference. You got that trip to Big Ten Maryland, and then obviously the the TCU game coming in to to help prepare you to try and win a, a conference title. Um, I'd say they they're, they're pretty big. They uh they help set, set the tempo for the rest of the season. I know that for a fact, but. We just treat every game the same. We trying to win. We come. We trying to come out with a win, um, in any way possible. So, um, yeah, those first those first non conference games are a really big tempo setter for us. Thank you, Elijah. Good luck in fall camp. We're excited to watch you guys kick things off against UNT on Thank September third. Thank you. Rainey, he talked about being hungry. They were 7-0 and in his heart the season last yeah. year before they dropped four of their last five games, still trying to chase that conference championship. Yeah, and, I mean, that's just the way football is. You yeah. start out so well, and then you just run into it a little bit. But, yeah, he, he touched on it. I mean, those first four non-conference games, yeah. what, a, what a big, big-time games for them to start the season.